Shit, my friendly guy, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here. And let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And I am still in the winter side of this zoo for now. But it shouldn't be too long until we start getting into less snowy habitats. This might very well be the last full snow habitat I will be doing. But it's quite fitting to have a snowy habitat, for me at least, this week. Because it has actually snowed in Wales this week. Not a lot, but it has snowed a little bit. So it's still cold enough for that. And today I'm building a habitat for the Eurasian lynx and this has got to be like one of my favorite habitat animals from the Europe pack because I am definitely a cat person so I was really looking forward to building a habitat for these beautiful cats and the Eurasian lynx likes a lot of plant coverage and they do live in forested areas so I started off with just a forest. When I bought my lynxes from the animal trading I noticed that the image of this one lynx was very different to the rest and the colour markings were blank and I didn't really know why because I've never really had this before but it is my first, what I'm guessing is Lacoustic Lynx and this Lynx is just beautiful. I think I spent like 20 minutes just following it around, taking loads of screenshots because I was just so excited. He is beautiful and it meant that I needed to make a very special habitat for these Lynx because I have a very special Lynx. So I was thinking along the lines of something still for the new year. I had a look at Pantone's colour of the year because it's always fun to have a look at what the colour theme is for the year. And the colour of the year for 2022 is very Perry which is a blue purple and you can imagine how excited I was that 2022's colour of the year was purple. <laughs> so I had a look at the description of this very peri colour and it says very peri displays a sprightly joyous attitude and dynamic presence that encourages courageous creativity and imaginative expressions and I kind of love that so I picked it apart <laughs> as I usually do to try and get something that would translate into Planet Zoo. The creativity part was so easy, like you have to be creative to, to play Planet Zoo and not get bored. I took the courageous part of it and I was thinking of like courageous activities that I could recreate in Planet Zoo in a sort of forest environment for the lynx. And I found these rope bridges and it made me think of like a high ropes course there's a popular one in the UK called Go Ape and you have to be quite courageous to do these activities and you'll see more about like these rope activities as I go along but this bridge kind of solidified it all for me and I was just like great I get to use a new object the cats may be able to climb on this I wasn't really sure as I started they can climb on everything which is really exciting and it fits in with the description of the colour of the year. And I picked the colour palette called Star of the Show to highlight this very peri purple nicely. And it was a lot of natural nature type colour tones. So I picked a brown called Petrified Oak and a cream white colour called Cloud Dancer. And I thought Cloud Dancer fit really nicely as a name with the high ropes course it's going to be high up off the ground so clouds made sense to me i'm also wearing some of my new clothes that i got for christmas and this is a very cute cardigan with clouds all over it so i thought that was perfect to go along with the theme as well <laughs> i'm going to be putting the rope higher above the activities as well as like a rope that you would put the harness on 
I haven't done one of these courses since I was very young. It must have been about 11, maybe? And I could climb around all of these different activities, things, but there was this bit at the end where you have to jump to grab onto something, like it's a leap of faith type of style, and that's probably where you need the most courage because I was absolutely terrible at that. Like everything else I could climb and I'd be fine, um, but I couldn't like make myself jump off something. <laughs> Have you ever gone to an activity high ropes course yourself? Have you ever tried out anything like this? And just making like a netted climbing thing for this side. Uh, put a little like wood piece then at the bottom so I imagine that like the people could stand on that like more solid piece and climb across using the rope nets then. A lot of these activities I had like humans in mind not the cats. <laughs> it's just funny because I said at the beginning that I wanted like something special for the links and this one was sort of inspired by the leap of faith that I always found terrifying as a child. <laughs> I thought maybe this one would be kind of a fun representation of something like a a swing so you would jump from one side to the other and hold on to the African beats <laughs> as like a kind of rope. This was the trickiest part of the whole ropes course to build. I wanted to build like kind of swinging bridges that you would have to kind of hop onto and climb across while they realistically would sway back and forth. And I did start out trying to keep this just a base game build because I thought if this was like actually climbable, this high ropes course could work for more than just the links. But the base game objects just weren't thin enough to make the bridges that I wanted to make but I used the rope or the ceiling light fixture tube from the Europe pack as the bridge supports because they were thinner than anything that I've managed to find in base game. And now I'm getting lower down because I am angling or lowering some of the platforms so that the ropes course steadily gets lower when it gets deeper into the forest so you start off the course deep in the forest and then you slowly rise up in the trees as you get through the forest. This part of the course is more like a balancing type of thing. I would think uh, if you were doing this as a person you would have to balance on like one of the logs maybe. Yeah, you would have to like balance your feet, put your feet like on the one log as like a balance thing. But I was sort of thinking that maybe some of these things would be a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult and that I would need to do like different parts of the course to have different difficulties. And this is when I find out they can use everything. So I'm gonna leave that little part in and my links is already <laughs> using the ropes course and using it to get up a tree and to sit in a tree which i just love and this thicker trunk of this tree is one of the new european trees the london plane tree and i just finished reading a cassandra clear book or rereading the last hours again london plane trees were mentioned in the books which I got really excited for because I was like oh I know what they look like <laughs> I just put them in a planet zoo build if you are new I do like reading <laughs> they're not just there as a background I've read them all <laughs> I've read more than just them and my shadow hunter books are behind my head there right next to that little pink rabbit <laughs> but if you're not like a reader you may have heard of the mortal instrument and of shadow hunters in that way from the Netflix series and there was a film as well for the mortal instruments so if you've 
might have heard of it from there, but that was a while ago now. But like The Last Hours is the newest books in the Shadowhunters series and they're set in the early 1900s. These books are set in London, so they have London plane trees. So it was really exciting to know what a London plane tree looked like and the fact that I was reading about these things and I just put these trees in without knowing. Love it. But I thought this would be fun as like a balancing type of agility thing where you could like hold on to those ropes but the ropes would move so it would be hard to balance. And I thought maybe this could be like the easier side of the ropes course so you would kind of skip a couple of the more difficult parts of the course. This would like be the simpler side of the course. So I'm creating my own type of bridge for this one. And these wood pieces from the Africa style do have the climbable tag on them. If you want to use like extra objects that are not in the climbing part of the habitat tab and you want to use something from construction, just go into the filters and properties part. I just know where, where it is on the list uh, and climbable will be on there so you can find a few extra items that animals can use to climb like these little wood pieces which are just perfect for a bridge and my favorite part of an agility course is the zip line they're so fun you feel like you're flying i love zip lines i needed to make sure that it would go from the tree and stop roughly where the barrier stopped so i used the advanced move tool to basically pull the rope back and forth from the tree to where i was planning on ending the zip line Instead of building the whole line of rope, I was just pulling it back and forth to find the right angle. It's probably one of my most favorite parts of this whole thing. It's so simple, but it's the funniest thing ever seeing the lynx climb this zip line because as a typical cat, it's not actually used the zip line how it's supposed to be used. It just walked along the top of the rope you'll have to stick around to the end because i'm definitely going to add that and for like the zip line end where like it would stop the thing you sat on or yeah usually you sat on it or holding on to it this is like the part where you would stop and climb off the zip line and i wanted it to be quite natural so i'm using the new climbable logs because they were just very pretty and curved so it fit in with like the sort of shape I was trying to create with this and now I'm trying to create like a little zip line seat <laughs> yeah it looks like a, a type of thing that you could sit on and hold on to as you go through go down the zip line it's made out of a pillow it'd probably be really comfortable compared to some of the zip lines that you've seen that are made out of like plastic this looks quite comfy <laughs> and this habitat is going to be like the last one up on this higher part of the mountain so i still wanted to have a look at what the guests could see from the mountaintop restaurant that i built they can't see much of the agility course from there but the restaurant actually has a really good view of this like sloping hill up towards the mountain and the lynx can actually get up to this part as well so i thought i would give the lynx like a little cave bed area to give them a reason to climb up the mountain so that the guests can see them from the mountaintop restaurant and even though i don't mind spending a bit more time on these habitats now that i'm gonna stick to one video a week with sometimes a bonus saturday video i still like using tricks like this uh to save myself a little bit of time when building because rock placement even though we have this randomization tool now is still not like the easiest thing to do rocks can take hours so why not just duplicate one cave and then put it on another cave of course i did blend it in a little bit with the terrain added a few more because that cave entrance wasn't exactly the same as the other one 
but it does save you a little bit of time instead of doing everything from scratch. When I was first started getting into building habitats, I liked watching other people's for inspiration, but if you like download lots of blueprints and you like a certain part of someone's blueprint, even if it's mine, I really don't mind. <laughs> Just duplicate it. Grab a part that you like and duplicate it into yours. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be something that you've built and you're duplicating. You could be a little part of a blueprint that you like. I know I have recently had a comment that said something along the lines of that, that they really liked my habitat. They really liked a certain part of it that they've taken as inspiration for their own, which I think is really cool. It's got the Capricorn castle on one side and the gingerbread house on the other. So the Ibex and the Fallow Deer. I wanted to make sure that all of these habitats felt like they belong together as well. To blend them all in, I'm using the wall lights that's from the Europe pack with the animals on them. So this one, of course, has the links on it. And I'm also reusing the education frames as well that I'd built with the classic and the European items. If you like these frames, let me know and I will do like a little blueprint on the Steam Workshop if you like the look of these frames. They're very simple. There's not a lot to it, but everything's flexi color, so it's really nice to keep the color scheme of the habitat with the education frames as well. I've done a lot of the pretties with the white links because he's just beautiful. So exciting having something so different. It was just like a chance that it was on the animal trading market thing. So definitely when you are buying your animals, if you play Planet Zoo, look at the little thumbnails of the animal images in the circles. That's the only way that I actually noticed that the animal was different and why I bought it but I haven't quite finished all of the European animals yet. The snow is slowly gonna melt away. <laughs> we might still be a little bit wintry for the next couple of weeks but I'm ready for it to be spring now. <laughs> it's been cold for long enough. <laughs> the links on the zip line is the funniest thing ever though <laughs> it's my favorite thing that's not how it works a typical cat just doing whatever it feels like doing but i still have the badges to make a habitat for but i think that's my last european animal but i also have the california sea lion from the North America pack that I haven't done a habitat for yet either. If you have any ideas for any animals from America or Europe, because they're gonna be mixed in this American zoo now, I don't really mind. If you've got any ideas for any other pack animals, like the badger or the California sea lion, let me know in the comments too. And of course, let me know what you think of this high ropes course. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it off there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. And if you haven't already and you would like to, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I upload on Wednesdays and sometimes you'll have a bonus Saturday video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.